Hi there, I just want to bring a little thought today that will hopefully bring us some encouragement. And I want to stick with the theme of hope because I feel that that's really important for us at this time. So if you saw my first video last week, you might remember that I said I'm not the most skillful of cooks. And it may not surprise you to know that neither am I a very skilled gardener, which is a bit of a shame actually, because um, there have been and there are some really good gardeners in my family. So my nanny Pierce, that's my dad's mum, her garden was always a thing of beauty. It was just always so colourful and um, just really vibrant. And my mum and dad, they've got a really lovely garden as well. In fact, at times when you go in their back garden, it feels a bit like a mini Eden where there's so much, um, so many pears and apples and raspberries and it's just bursting with um, produce. And out the front, my dad is really proud of his hanging baskets and his window boxes, and rightly so, because they are um, really stunning. And to be fair, my parents have tried with me. Um, they've, on a number of occasions, delivered me a ready-made window basket, um, hanging basket even, uh, for me to put at the front of my house. Uh, but the problem is they just never seem to last for very long in my care. And I think the reason is, in fact, I know the reason is, is that I forget to water them. Apparently watering is a really important part of plant care. But I do have one success story and uh, I do have one house plant that I've managed to keep for a couple of years now. Now when I tell you it's an orchid, this orchid, some of you with some plant knowledge might quickly make the connection that actually that's probably because um, orchids don't require a lot of water, which is true. But anyway, I have this orchid and it was given to me by a little boy as a thank you present at the end of his uh, reception year. And when he gave it to me, it much, was much like it is now. The flowers were out. It was kind of um, really in a state of beauty. There were buds and um, I put it in pride of place in uh, the living room. And it stayed like that for, for many months, uh, just looking really beautiful. Until eventually the flowers began to wilt a bit, the petals began to drop. And then it ended up looking a bit like a stick in a really pretty pot. And I didn't know what to do with it, and so I moved it from the living room into the kitchen and just put it on the windowsill and left it there. You know, and occasionally Matt would look at it and think, why on earth are you, are you keeping that? But I did, because I didn't know what to do with it. And it had very little intervention, really, other than my mum occasionally, when she came round, she would run some water through it and then put it back. And it stayed in that state for months and months and months, until eventually one day, I went into the kitchen and I noticed the tiniest of little green buds had appeared. And then as the weeks went on, more buds appeared, the buds grew, and eventually the flowers blossomed again and it was kind of restored to its former glory. Now you might be thinking, Mandy, why are you telling us about your orchid and what on earth has this got to do with hope? Well, the thing is that just as this orchid goes through seasons, so do we in life. You know, at times it feels like life is is a bit like the orchid when it's um, in its state of beauty. You know, the parts of our lives seem to work together in harmony. Uh, we feel productive and fruitful. Um, it's not perfect because life really is, but actually everything feels okay and manageable and we can see the beauty in life. But at other times, and this is probably the season we're going through now on a global scale, life can feel a bit like the orchid when it is pretty much a stick in a pretty pot and it doesn't feel productive and actually it feels difficult and it doesn't feel okay. And I would say we find ourselves in this period of what I would call waiting. We're waiting and we're longing just for things to be different, for, for circumstances and for life to change. And it's at this time when we really need to hold on to hope, we need to grasp it. In fact, I would say more than that, we need to choose, we need to intentionally choose to hope. And by hope, I don't mean fingers crossed or I hope things are going to get better. Of course, I mean we need to choose to firmly place our hope in God himself. And when we don't, that's when we find that sometimes some of those dis words creep in. So we start to feel disheartened. We start to feel perhaps disappointed um, or despondent. And so we need to choose to hope in God because he's the one who can break through and he's the one who can bring us through uh, this waiting season. And the other thing that I've learned is that sometimes when I've said I'm trusting God or I'm putting my hope in God, what I'm really doing is I'm hoping and trusting that he's going to work things out how I want them to be worked out. So really what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm hoping in my own uh, plans and in my own dreams when actually true hope when we really hope it just means putting it 
our hope in God for who he is and saying, look, God, I know you know more. I know that you're the one who can bring me through and I trust for you to do that in your timing according to your will. So I just want to encourage us in this waiting time just to hold on and to choose to hope in God. And I just want to give us three reminders of why we should hope in God. And the first one is this. We should choose to put our hope in God because he is always working. He's always working out his plans. He's working out his promises. He's working out his purposes. In Romans, it talks about he's always working things out for the good of those who love him, even if we can't see it. Now, for a quite a long period of time, this orchid, as I said, looked like a stick and there were no outward signs of life at all. However, on the inside, in the roots and in the stem, there must have been some pretty amazing things going on there. And in the same way, even though we can't always see it, although I do believe at this time we are seeing, you know, the work of God, um, you know, we can see that churches are you know, are called to pray. We can see that churches are reaching people through the power of technology, but still there are times where we feel like, you know, what is going on? And when we feel like that, we've got to remember God is always working. And something that I've learned to do is to look back. You know, when we find it hard in the present, look back. Think of a time when God brought um, God brought us through in the past and see how he worked it out and then remind ourselves of that and so that we can have greater hope now knowing that if he's done it before he can do it again. This year it was much easier for me to leave that orchid looking like a stick because I knew that it had bloomed once so it was likely to bloom again which it has. You know, maybe you don't have a personal experience to draw back on. Well, just remember the events of last week of Easter. You know, when Jesus died on the Friday, it went quiet for a while. You know, all people could see was the tomb. There was not much sign of outward, outwardly of life. And yet we know that during that time, God was at work in, in such a powerful way, working out the salvation, working out salvation for us and um, working out so that we could have this eternal hope. So... Hope in God because he is always working on our behalf. Psalm 121 says he doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. He's continually looking over us and watching over us. The second thing I thought was is that we should hope in God because he has a much better viewpoint than we do. In truth, we're seeing this situation and we're seeing a very, very small snippet. We just see things through our perspective in the very limited time that we have. And yet God, we know he is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He's the God of eternity and he sees things on a much greater time scale than we do. And so we just need to trust that he will work things out and he'll work them out in his time scale and he'll work them out according to his knowledge and according to his wisdom, which is just far, far greater than our own. Our times are in his hands. So he's the one to hope in. In Psalm 139, it says, Lord, you have searched me. You know me. You know when I sit you know, when I rise. And then later it says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. We can hope in God because our times are in his hands. He knows what we've been through. He knows what we're going through and he knows what is ahead of us. He knows when this season will end and a season of fruitfulness will come. Finally, I thought we should choose to hope in God because he's the one who can bring breakthrough. You know, sometimes we look and we think, how can things change? But God is the God of breakthrough and he can bring life. He can bring change. He can um, restore um, any situation, any situation at all. He's the one who, when the Israelites were faced with a Red Sea in front of them and the enemies behind them, he made a way through the Red Sea. He's the one who, when Daniel was trapped with hungry lions, he, he closed their mouths to ensure his safety. He's the one in Isaiah who it says can, can bring streams in the middle of a desert. You know, God can make a way when we can't see it. When we don't know how, he can still do it. And so therefore, he is the one that we should put our trust in and our hope in. We're going through a season at the moment, much like this orchid goes through its seasons. You know, it's hard at the moment, but we just have to trust and hope in God that he will bring us through this time and he will bring breakthrough as we hope in him. So I just want to read you a verse from Psalm 130 from the Passion Translation and it says this. It says, Lord, if you measured us and marked us with our sins, 
who would ever have their prayers answered? But your forgiving love is what makes you so wonderful. No wonder you are loved and worshipped. This is why I wait upon you, expecting your breakthrough, for your word brings me hope. During this time, we just need to draw close to God and keep talking to him, telling him what's on our hearts, reading his word and the hope that is within it. I long for you more than any watchman would long for the morning light. I will watch and I will wait for you, O God, throughout the night. And then it says in verse 7, O Israel, keep hoping, keep trusting and keep waiting on the Lord, for he's tender-hearted, he's kind and he's forgiving. He has a thousand ways to set you free. So in this season of waiting, I just encourage us, let's just choose to keep our hope in God.